let's talk about the 10 game changes. You know, this is the most important part of transformation. You know, I talked a lot about digital transformation before COVID in the last decade, really. But what people fail to see sometimes is this is not just about digital. And it certainly isn't just about technology. It's also about our transformation. Right? But these 10 game changes are everywhere now and they're exploding because of the COVID crisis. And they're exploding because we're ready. Right? Big data, cloud computing, the internet of everything, quantum computing, natural language processing, right? Uh, artificial intelligence, uh, the blockchain, 3D printing, virtuality, and after all, genome editing, less of a concern here. But uh, let me direct your attention here to natural language processing. We're going to speak to computers. They're going to speak to us. We're going to use voice commands. We're going to use natural interfaces. And this is like imminent. Right now, if you speak to a computer, you'll get, you know, if you speak very slowly and patiently and without any strange words like my own name, uh, you know, then, then it works fine. But in the future, we're going to be there very quickly where we can have full interactions with machines that will understand our language in a very complex way. And it's quite clear what that's going to mean for supply chain, you know, being able to have language controlled devices. And I mean, these game changes are impacting everything. When you're talking about production, R&D, marketing, shipping, right? everything connected. Um, and of course, there are drawbacks from everything being connected, like equipment failure, like bias, you know, having a, a software that doesn't actually give you the real read, and of course, security. Very, very big topic to tackle uh, as we're connecting absolutely everything. We're going to have 9 billion people on the internet in 2030, right? 9 billion. And we're probably going to have up to a trillion devices connected on the internet, possibly more. Quite clearly here, you know, to summarize the previous game changes, data is the new oil. But it's also kind of a plutonium. It could be used as a weapon. Like we see social media right now, Facebook is using our data kind of as a weapon. And that, is, that needs to stop. So uh, different discussion here. But the second point is artificial intelligence is the new electricity. It's the power that puts all the data in the right place. If the system isn't intelligent, then what, is, what good is the data? It's just another data point. The Internet of Things is the new nervous system. It's like, think of this as a nervous system, like a body. Everything is flowing together into the central nervous system. That is basically what we have, uh, sort of a new meta level, right? where it's like a meta intelligence that's being built. Voice control and virtuality and all that together in terms of how we hear and how we see the world, those are the new senses. And, and that's where I think you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what we make out of those senses. Voice control is one thing. There are many funny stories about voice control, right? But virtuality is going to be also a question of how humans actually relate to it and what we think of it and how we like it. I mean, clearly, this future is not just connected, it's exponentially faster. It's converging industries, for example, supply chain, logistics, all converging with other sectors like quantum computer, the Internet of Things, and so on, all coming together to create combinatorial products. Right? So as we're looking at this future, it is all those things gradually, then suddenly. Think of it truly like Star Trek, you know, a warp drive. You hit the warp drive button and it just goes, boom. Right? And in 10 years, we're going to be 4, 8, 16, 32, 256 on the exponential scale. That's 300x of today. Can you imagine? So, Forrester Report says that basically traditional supply chain works as follows, which is a predefined workflow, right? If this and that. And that's how it currently works. In the future, we're going to have a sort of non-deterministic system where the workflows aren't all defined, you know, where the system can learn and can be flexible, right? And handle different business rules. That's going to be crucial ultimately for us. It's going to be very, very powerful uh, to uh, control this and to figure out how we can be more efficient and faster. So let's move on and say, well, basically what's happening all around us is that science fiction is becoming science fact. If you're a scientist, you know this is, this is true because what we're discovering now is that the speed is just out there, mind-boggling fast. We, we haven't seen this kind of development. Everything happened in real time. And in 10 years, we could have nuclear fusion. In 10 years, we could have supercomputing. Right? 
I mean, we're, we're, we're leaping and bounding in science and technology. And so when we see this, for example, this is an app called GPT-3. Uh, it's an artificial intelligent engine that generates uh, products on demand. So you can type something or speak something, and then it will act like, like a human that creates, for example, an app or a CSS code or JavaScript or anything that's like on the lowest part of the, uh, of the engineering food chain. <laughs> but imagine, I mean, we can just tell the app to create something that has to do with programming or uh, with creating answers of photo albums or any of those things, right? Uh, GPT-3, you should look it up on YouTube, it's pretty mind-boggling and we have to understand what they mean as we're moving to the sort of voice control territory, for example. Here's a really interesting uh, statistic right, that shows you what happens with image processing, which we know is already pretty good. It's not perfect, but close. And language processing, yeah, we're still a little bit away from translation. But sentence parsing, and yes, we're going to be able to speak to machines. They speak back to us. Uh, and it becomes a sort of a, a really vastly improved interface. I think in the future, if I want to find out my research for, for speaking uh, on my speaking gigs, I can just speak to my wristwatch and say, please provide the following. <laughs> uh, a bit of Star Trek right there. So there's a new era of customer service coming up with fully automated uh, chatbots and, uh, and voice activation and bot purchasing and all that stuff. It's, it's the uh, evolution to what's called conversational AI which means that we can converse with an app. Right? Let's, when we talk about AI, let's not get confused here. These are not intelligent like we are. You know, they are really just more IA, intelligent assistants.